Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and right now I want to show off and review one of my most favorite lapidary machines I've ever used. Ruby Medina's Highland Park A50 Combo Lapidary Machine, Grinder Sander. Not to be mistaken with their combos that have a saw on the side, and not to be mistaken with the E50 that has like the leather thing on the other side of the machine and only holds one wheel on the left side of the unit. This particular machine is set up for four wheels. Usually I see pictures of two expandable drums and then two silicon carbide hard wheels. We only use one silicon carbide drum because it's hard to take on and off wheels from the inner expandable drum if you have two of them side by side. I really cut my teeth on this machine. This is the machine I probably cut polished, shaped stones with more than any other machine. Ruby had this machine for many, many years. He paid about $500 for this machine, which is not a bad price. You can see this machine going anywhere from $350 to $750. At least that's what I would pay. I do sometimes see them go for as much as $900 or more. This machine uses a pulley. And not only is this machine special because I cut so many pieces on this machine, but also because that motor fell on my shin and took all the skin off when we were first setting up this machine in this location. Some time ago, I did replace the silicon carbide wheels with diamond wheels. There's a roughed up, really worn in 60 grit hard wheel over here that acts a lot more like an 80. And then over here, I believe it's like 150 or 180 hard wheel, kind of an unusual number, but it's also extremely worn in, so it works a little bit more like 200. Then of course, our expandable belts. It's kind of rare to see expandable belts in eight inches over 800 grit. I know they do make 1,000. We personally don't have any. Ruby Medina uses, I believe, like 80 through 600 when it comes to the expandable belts. This has been Master Medina's main squeeze for probably over 10 years. Nowadays, he's using my good old Easy Cab that I donated to Inlakesh Woodshop. Although, I do see him use his old Highland Park all the time, especially for when he's cutting larger pieces of jade. This machine does have some bearings on the arbor. I've never seen anybody jerry-rig more than the two wheels on each side. With these machines but I do imagine it can be done. There is a leather pad on the side of this machine. I have never used it. I've seen Ruben use it a couple times with cerium but nowadays we usually use jewelry buffers that spin a lot faster and give us a better quality polish. She's an old and dirty machine but one of my most favorite machines. If you don't know Highland Park I highly suggest checking them out. They're one of the leaders of the industry and always have been since their birth around 1947. That's about the time um, Lapidary Journal was coming out. It's a really good time. This machine, for as long as I can remember, has been using the same cheap aquarium pump. Every once in a while it would get clogged and I would have to go down there with like a dirty toothbrush and clean it up. I've made a lot of messes with this machine here in the shop and it is definitely a piece of Lapidary Dave history. I love this machine. Highland Park is one of my most favorite companies in the industry. If you don't know them, make sure to check them out. Since their birth in about 1947, they've been one of the leaders of the industry, especially in North America. Highland Park came around about 1947. At least there's a catalog from 47 on Highland Park's website, which is really, really cool. Not everybody keeps track of their ancient catalogs when different companies go between different hands and different owners. But the new owners of Highland Park definitely appreciate their history. And you can find three different catalogs on their website. One from the 40s, one from the 60s, and one from the 70s. Sorry about the heater in here. It's winter time here in Taos, New Mexico, and it uh, keeps me alive. This particular model is in the catalog from the 60s. So this machine was made no later than the 60s, late 60s. I'm not exactly sure on the number without looking back on the website using the same phone I'm filming with. But it is way cool to see this machine advertised. It was roughly in the late 300s, like 
like $380, $390 way back in the day. And that did come with the motor and the wheels. There is a cheaper version of the same model that didn't come with the motor or the wheels that was going for like late hundreds, like $190, $180. Either way, they were a fantastic deal. Folks who are lucky can still get this machine for the late 300s. But like I said before, it's definitely worth every penny of 500-ish, which is what Ruben Medina paid. This machine is very smooth for how old she is. And even though this is an 8-inch machine, we put 6-inch hard wheels on here because they're quite a bit cheaper. For its age, this machine is fantastic. Highland Park is owned by new owners and no longer make this machine. Highland Park was bought by, I believe the gentleman's name was Sherman Rowland and his brother John around the late 2000s, like 2009, 2010. They are really great guys. They go to the Tucson Gem Show and they definitely, definitely don't mind answering any questions you might have. Sherman Rowland is a really cool guy. This machine is actually casted. I believe it is not fabricated like with welders and stuff, but casted. Very impressive. John and Sherman go to Shenzhen themselves and oversee the entire manufacturing of the new Highland Park, which is really cool. They're not just leaving it up to folks who might not have as much experience with quality or the Highland Park name. So they go over there themselves. They have videos online where you can see them in China at their warehouse, or their factory. I don't want to ramble on too much about Highland Park history, um, Sherman Rowland and Dave and stuff. I'm going to save that for a video that I'm going to make later on this January. Anywho, I'm not going to just chat about this machine. I'm also going to use it. I'm going to polish up this piece of Ricolite Serpentine, local to New Mexico. I believe it's from Grant Grant's County. Grant County. I'm going to leave the back all crusty with its natural beat-up state. But I will be polishing and rounding up this face here and this side as well. I'll knock down this edge as well. Anywho, let's get started. I'm excited. I haven't used this machine in years. Alrighty, folks. Time to get started. Here's that beautiful piece of Ricolite. Everything looks a lot bigger on camera. It's actually kind of small. Decent amount of room. If this was my machine, I would actually cut this piece of metal here off and, yeah, have a little bit more space, maybe even do something to this. One thing worth mentioning about this particular machine before I get started is these little things. I did not see these on Highland Park machines online. They're like little tiny water guards. Every machine should come with these. You could like tuck a piece of leather or something on the side if you needed more protection than what these little guys are offering. I don't know if Ruby Medina like just found these and put them on there from another machine or if the gentleman Greg King who he bought this machine from did it. But there's a chance that these might have came with the Highland Park machine. I've just never seen them before. I'm definitely going to rig these up on all of my machines, these little clips. Anywho, I'm going to get started on the super coarse wheel, which nowadays works more like 80 grit. And then, and then I'm going to hop on over to the slightly less coarse wheel, which is rocking at about 200-ish, before I hop on over to 220 over here on the expandable wheel. All right. Okay, that's my 60, 80 something grit. Here's the 200 ish. As you can see, the water, or you might not be able to see, the watering on this machine is a little off. That's nobody's fault but our own. Alright, 
That did not take too long at all. Very nice. Let me see if I can't dry this off and get this stone in focus for you. There we go. Beautiful piece of Ricolite Serpentine. Anywho, I'm going to move the camera on over here and get started on the expandable belt. 220 on the expandable belt, that is. Folks, this is my 220 grit silicon carbide expandable belt polish. The silicon carbide can leave a little bit of facets here on the side, here and there, because the stone is not the toughest. I really love using 8 inch silicon carbide expandable belts. Even on my 8 inch machines, I usually use 6 inch expandable belts because I can initially get them cheaper. I will definitely reconsider the spacing is so much fun. Anywho, I found a 400, 600, and 800 grit expandable belt. I'm going to go ahead and use them all. Show this bad girl off when I get done. Some people might not like the whole changing out the expandable belt thing, but really I kind of don't mind. What are you polishing that you need to work that fast, you know? I work live on Facebook and social media, and I usually tend to build my machines around speed, but if you're polishing something that you plan on selling and you plan on getting what it's worth and what your time is worth, then usually the extra minute or two replacing these belts shouldn't matter. It's therapeutic. Anywho, this is 400. Alrighty, that was 400. Up next, 600. Alright, that was 600, and finally I'm going to lick this stone with 800 grit. I absolutely do notice a difference between every grit, even between 600 and 800. Usually I won't do 400 unless it's a really hard stone. For this video I didn't mind, and it'll make the best out of the stone. This machine is a lot of fun. All right. 800 grit. All right, and that, my dear friends, is 800 grit, silicon carbide, expandable drum on the Highland Park A50. I'm gonna dry off this stone before I show it to you. All right, this, my friends, is 600 grit dry. Really, really nice. This stone works extremely well. The back does not dry up as nicely as the polished surface, but she'll look extra great when she's dry and all chalky. 
and this face will be all shiny. I'm going to take this over to the buffer really quick, bring it back, show you the full shine, or at least the shine that I'm leaving this with, and have a few words about this Highland Park A50 in Highland Park before I get out of here. Check out that shine, folks. I have no idea what's on that wheel. I forgot to bring my wheel charged with Fabuluster. That looks like a blend of like red rouge and some white diamond, all kinds of stuff. Whatever it is, it looks like it left the stone at about 10,000 grit. Let's take it in front of the Highland, which has a little bit better lighting over there. All right, folks, check that out. Looking great, fantastic palm piece. That's like compound stuck on the side there. I'll get that later with some warm water. Check out the variety in the serpentine. Awesome banding, cool pulling there. I'm actually happy that I chose this stone to work on the Highland Park. Maybe it will encourage Ruben Medina to carve it like he does other serpentines. I believe this is William Sight Serpentine, I'm not 100% sure, but he does great work. Anyway, the Highland Park A50, an absolutely beautiful machine, quite an old machine, but far from obsolete. They made it right the first time, and that's why it's lasted all these years. I'm extremely happy that Ruben Medina bought this machine for about $500 all those years ago. I'm very thankful that he made me take the scratches out of his work for him, which really helped to seed my love for lapidary. I sell a lot of machines that I don't use, but we are never getting rid of this A50. Absolutely love it. I hope this helps somebody out there who sees this machine or a machine like it for sale online. Again, I see these kind of go anywhere from between 350 and 750 casually, although I do see them being a little overpriced at $900 and $1,100. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Love you folks. This is Lapidary Dave. See you next time. Peace.